Hi, today we're going to talk about the end of classical economics and we're going to begin with the beginning of the end. We're going to talk about two thinkers who set the stage for the movement away from classical economics. The first is Jeremy Bentham and he wrote an introduction to the principles of morals and legislation in 18, I'm sorry, 1780. The purpose of his book was to introduce the notion of utilitarianism. Okay, this is an old idea that goes back to Epicurus in ancient Greece, but he's reintroducing it at the end of the 18th century. And here he's going to argue that utility or pleasure is the source of all value. Okay? So this is not about marginal utility yet, just bringing back utility as a standard of value. Now he was a philosopher and social theorist uh, who introduced the stand utility as a standard of value in his philosophy, utilitarianism. He argued things were valuable to individuals that gave them happiness. And thus social policy should be directed at creating, quote, the greatest good for the greatest number. It was not up to others to decide what provided the individual with happiness, right? So he's the person who made the argument pushpin is as good as poetry, where pushpin was sort of like nursery rhymes. Now, he noted that some people enjoy things with greater than intensity than others. So if you enjoy ice cream, more than other people, you should be given ice cream until others value it as much as you. So we're talking here about the sum of individual utilities. And this notion of the sum of individual utilities would bring about this philosophy's demise eventually. We'll talk about that later. Bentham applied his notion that utility was a source of value to legislation and public policy, but he also applied it to penal reform in the reverse. Penal reform, the goal was um, of prison was to make convicts so miserable they would never commit another crime for fear of going back. And as a result of this, he developed his notion of the panopticon. Okay, this was a prison that was like spokes on a wheel and all the cells faced the center of the wheel. And then the prison would bring in ministers, one after the other, all day long, to give sermons to the criminals. Not because they would pay attention, but because listening to them would make them so miserable they would never commit a criminal act that would get them to have to go back and listen to these sermons again. This is kind of amusing, but in fact, the, the 20th century philosopher Michel Foucault reintroduced this idea in his, uh, one of his famous books on crime and punishment, on no, discipline and punishment. Okay, now, Bentham was a full tilt bozo, right? He was crazy. One time he was talking to James Mill, who we're going to talk about in a park in London, and he suddenly took off running and ran to his house. James Mill, his friend, assumed something was terribly wrong and proceeded to follow. As he got to Bentham's house and he went in, he found Bentham sitting in front of a portrait of himself. When he asked him what was wrong, Bentham said he just couldn't go another minute without gazing upon himself. The ultimate uh, oddity of Jeremy Bentham was that when he died, he left his fortune to the University of London. He also left them his corpse. He had it stuffed, put in a cabinet, and the cabinet was to be placed in the Board of Governors room at the University of London and opened up every time they had a meeting so they would direct the university and its resources along utilitarian principles. First of all, the first thing that happened is the head fell off, taxidermy being what it was in that day. And so they jammed his head between his knees and had a plaster one 
making up. And so when you opened up the cupboard, there would be Jeremy Bentham with a plaster head and his head jammed between his knees. It did not take many meetings before the Bard of Governors came to their senses and relocated Jeremy's cabinet with his body in it into the basement of the library at the University of London where it stayed until World War II. During World War II, the basement of the library at the University of London was used for a bomb shelter. And one day, while people were in the bomb shelter, a woman opened the cabinet to see what was in it and was scared to death because there was Jeremy Bentham with his head between his legs staring back at her. Um, now, this weirdness takes one step further. Jeremy was finally had his head reattached, is put behind glass, and you can go see him in the University of London Library. And at their bookstore, you can buy the t-shirt, the greeting card, and the coffee cup. So, he was a little bit crazy. James Mill was a classical economist and close friend of Jeremy Bentham, who made some effort to introduce this philosophy of utilitarianism into economics. He was of limited success. It really didn't catch on among the classical economists. But most important, he was the father of John Stuart Mill. And this takes us to the last of the classical economists. 